Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Jared from Zombicide Invader by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Maddie from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 7 of this Zombie Side Invader series. And today we are painting Jared. He's one of the survivors that you can play as in this sci-fi themed version of the Zombie Side franchise. So like in the last video in this series, which was Cole, I am doing this video in real time. So rather than speeding it up to show more content, I'm leaving it as the normal speed so that you can see more closely what it is that I'm doing. So if you didn't see the last video and you didn't leave any feedback, I would love to know whether you prefer watching miniatures being painted in real time like this, or if you do like it in time lapse where you do get to see uh, more of the painting process, more footage, but obviously not being able to see quite as closely what's happening because there is quite a bit more time that goes into putting a video like this together. Um, instead of just hitting the speed up button for all of the footage, I'm actually going in and picking out which uh, footage I'm going to show. Um, but I do want to put out the best videos that I can and the ones that are going to be most well received. So yeah, I would love to hear whether you like this format or whether you like it in time lapse, so just for going ahead for how I keep on making these videos. So in Invader, there are six survivors that you can play as, and they come in two basic different types. There's Cole and Vivian, which are the civilians, and then the other four are Jared in this video here, and then there's Baraka, Magnus, and Mitsuki. And those four are the soldiers, and so they are in quite heavy armour, whereas Cole and Vivian are just more in civilian clothes because they're just sort of normal people, I suppose. So going into painting all of the survivors, Cole and Vivian were pretty easy to approach. Looking at their artwork and then how that related back to the miniatures, that was pretty obvious because they had, like, take, take Cole for example, he's got his jacket, pants, there's armour that goes over his pants, those sorts of things. That was really, really obvious on the mini where each of those parts needed to be. So I knew what colours each part was going to be, what process I was going to go through to highlight and shade. It was all pretty familiar sort of stuff. So that was good heading into them. Going into the survivors though was a little bit of a different story because I didn't have quite as clear of an idea from looking at the artwork on their cards to then looking at the miniature exactly what each part was and what colour it needed to be. Now the artwork on the cards only shows a portion of their body, mostly their torso and part of their legs. You can find other images online, but at best it's a shot of their front and you can't see their back at all or anything under their arms. And then so when I was looking over each of the minis, it was there, there were certain points here and there in their armor with the different panels and things like that. It was a little hard to tell if it was supposed to be this light gray that the rest of it is or if it's something that should be a different color. Um, so I had a little bit of trouble there just knowing exactly what I was going to paint each part and what each part, part was supposed to be. The other thing that I was a little unclear of as well is that because they are predominantly just light grey armour, it's starting off with a light colour. And as I've talked about in the past, when I'm base coating, I try and start with a mid-range colour, so whether it's a mid-range blue, green, red, whatever, so that then when it comes to highlighting and shading, there's enough room to go darker for the shadows but more importantly there's lots of room to come back up to brighten the color off for the highlighting so that there is a good contrast between the highlight and the shades and so when the mini is in the middle of the table being looked at by people around the edge of the board that contrast can be seen but because it was starting with or because the the armor was such a light color I wasn't exactly sure how to go about the highlighting and shading for this so that I was able to get that contrast because I knew that there wasn't a lot of room to go brighter um, but because it's light grey there's only so dark it's actually going to be. So I was a little bit unclear on a couple of ways that I needed to approach painting these. So what I did was I painted the other three 
first and I set Jared aside knowing that I would do him in the video because just looking at him as a mini it looked to be the best one to paint the one that had sort of the best details and things like that so I used Baraka Magnus and Mitsuki as kind of my guinea pigs to trial a few things on trial a few approaches and then when I came to Jared I had them under control and I was able to sort of apply all of them and put them together into one and so I think Jared is the one that I have managed to paint the best um, because I was able to take each of those things that I learned and apply them so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video is just what I learned by painting uh, the other three to then use on Jared and so I think sort of going forward I'll be able to apply these things in a couple of different scenarios so one if I'm painting a um, a mini that is going to be predominantly one color I'll be able to apply these things to that there I, I have painted ones you know in the past that have been basically one color and I've learned a few things which helped but I picked another couple of things up along the way um, but also when there's key parts of a mini that I'm really not sure of how it should be painted. I've learned a few things there for tackling that as well. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to talk about. So as a starting point to make it as obvious as possible where each of the panels of armor were and weren't, I painted all of those sections that are in between. And looking straight at the artwork, it looks like there's some kind of black, dark gray sort of suit underneath, and then all of the panels then get fitted over the top. So I started off by painting them with a dark gray and I painted them with a dark gray rather than black because there is a bit of texture to them. They're kind of not sort of ribbed, but there's, there, there is some texture there. And so rather than painting it black and then spending time highlighting, I knew I was just gonna pop up a, a, a black wash over it. So by going with the dark gray, then putting the black wash over the top, um, that black fell into all of the recesses. So overall, that makes it look like it is black. But if you kind of look closely, there are those raised sections that are that light gray. So that was my starting point. And then that made it clear where the panels sort of started and finished and just, just made it a little bit more obvious. So then I, well, when I was painting Baraka, which was the first one that I did, this is where I had a bit of trouble kind of just getting into it and painting because I wasn't totally sure on whether certain panels should be light gray, whether other ones should be different colors. And yeah, so I just sort of hit a little bit of a roadblock there because one thing that I've talked about in the past is that when a mini is predominantly one color, that is one of the most surefire ways of just making your mini look flat because you've just basically got head to toe one color and there isn't really anything to bust it up. Even if you do highlighting and shading, it does still just kind of all blend together and it doesn't give um, your eye something to focus on and to pick out and to help you differentiate the different parts of the mini it just reads as one whole thing. And so what I've always sort of done in the past is looked for whether it's um, jewelry or belts, or you know, little, little details like that that you can pick out that may only be small, but it just helps you to bust those big sections of color up. And so looking at Baraka's artwork, there really wasn't anything like that in it. It was just all of the armor was light gray, but I knew I needed to break it up somehow. And so I was trying to look for where I was going to do that. And that was a bit of a roadblock to get in because I didn't really know what I was going to paint light gray and what was going to be different colors. What I found was that as I just started painting, it kind of, the mini sort of told me itself really where the other colors needed to be introduced because I could see where there was too much gray and where leaving some, some gray was working all right. And so then I was able to get into it. So with Jared here, I just painted all of the armor light gray and then looked from there, right, where do I now need to pick out different sections to paint different colors to bust up those big sections of gray? I had a bit of an idea, because um, you can see there are some panels at the back of his shoulders and on his hips and spots like that where I, I painted them blue. And I painted them blue because this is the, the American guy. And so he's got the American flag that ends up being on his chest. And so the blue on the panels tied into the blue in the flag. That's why I picked blue for that. So that was pretty obvious that those needed to be different colors. But by having painted the other ones earlier on, that made it easier for me to know sort of ahead of time which ones were and weren't going to be good to pick out in a different color. But also painting the other ones just showed me 
don't sit there and worry about it too much. Just start painting and it'll become apparent once paint starts getting put down where it needs to be busted up because, you know, like if you look where I'm, you know, putting the wash down on his forearms there at the moment, they're pretty small. They don't really need to be busted up too much because there is that sort of section in between the forearm part and the bicep part. Um, but then more around the top where, you know, like all of the, the shoulder sections and that, those are large sections of that light gray. And so that became really, really obvious that that needed to be busted up. So yeah, so that was the, the first, first thing that I picked up by painting the other ones is don't sit there and worry about it too much. Just get painting and it'll become apparent what things need to be picked out to help bust those bigger sections of colors up. The other way that just starting to paint and just getting into it helped was helping me to work out the tricky parts where I wasn't sure if a certain part of the mini was supposed to be armor or that suit going underneath and just exactly what material it was supposed to be. Because as you start painting, it sort of started to make sense from one panel being armor, whether that thing sitting next to it would be armor or not as well. And so, yeah, that really, really just helped make it clear is sort of one part just kind of fed into another, fed into another and just made it more obvious. So yeah, it was, it was really a big thing just to get started rather than sort of dwelling on all those details and what was this color going to be and what, what should I paint this as? Just getting into it just really, really helped. The other big area going into painting these soldiers that I wasn't really clear on was how I was going to highlight and shade the armor. Because like I said earlier, it is predominantly light gray. And when starting with a light color, it doesn't leave you a lot of room to go up with the highlighting to make it brighter so that you can then get that real good contrast between your brightest highlights and the deepest shadows. And that is what I think really helps to build that contrast and that when the mini is sitting in the middle of the table and being looked at by people around the edge of the board to help the forms really come out and stop it from looking flat on the table. So what I did, and this was something that I, I thought of before starting Baraka and this ended up working, so I was really, really happy with that, is after putting down the, the light gray base coat, which was misty gray, the, the Reaper paint, um, I then used a really, really thin down Nuln oil wash. And the reason that I put that down was both to, so that it would flow into all of the little details, because as you would have seen on his shins, for example, there's this kind of T shape there, this part that sticks up. And so the wash flowed nicely around the edge of them and just helped to bring those details out a little bit without me having to go around and, you know, do dark line work to pick out every single little detail. But the other thing that it did was it just darkened all of those panels enough so that it did give me room to highlight. Now you might just say, well, why didn't you just base coat with a darker gray? And I could have done that. I could have used a stormy gray, which is my mid range gray. But the reason I went with misty gray instead of uh, stormy gray is because what I found in the past is if you base coat and then wash and then highlight with the base coat, it just looks right because you are highlighting back up with the same color that you used first of all, as opposed to base coating with my mid range gray, then putting a wash and then highlighting with the misty gray it just, it wouldn't have looked right as easily, I suppose, if that makes sense. The other thing though, is that if I started with Stormy Grey, then put the black wash over the top to flow into all of the recesses, well now it's going to be even darker than that, and now I've got so much more highlighting to do. So I started with the bright grey, so that when the black wash went on, it darkened it just enough to give me room to highlight back up, but it also was dark enough so that it would flow into all of, around all of those little bits of detail, help pick them out. But also when I then highlight with the misty gray, it looks right. And I'm doing that sort of in inverted commas, not that you can see it, but it made it look right because I, my first stage of highlighting was with the same color that I base coated with. So once that wash had gone down, then it was on to actually building the shadows, which is the step that I'm up to that, that you're watching right now. So what I did here was I used Stormy Grey and I 
heavily thin this down so that it became really, really thin, almost like a, a wash or a glaze, so that every layer of paint that I put on only made a really, really slight difference. And then I was able to build the shadows up over layers. And also by having it really, really thin, it makes feathering the edges out um, much, much easier than if the paint is thicker. And it was really important that I could get smooth edges to my blends because I knew I was going to be joining a shadow and a highlight together in the middle and I didn't want there to be any really defined lines because these panels are very smooth and so there wouldn't be any, any sharp lines of shadows or anything like that. So with that thinned uh, paint, I referred back to the photos that I took of the Zenithal Prime that I did. And so because um, you know I, I knew I was going to be using a brush, I did a Zenithal Prime initially, and then took some photos of that to refer back to for my highlighting and shading. Um, and so, yeah, looked at where the deeper shadows were. And I just sort of put some of that stormy gray down and then just feathered the edges out towards where I knew the highlight would be and then I just worked my way around and I treated every panel as an individual section and so I looked at where each individual panel would be getting light and shadow and just highlighted them accordingly worked my way around put the shadows into every panel and then when I came back to the starting point then that painted dried so then I was able to put the next layer on so starting in the exact same spot put some more of that really really thin down stormy grey and feathered it out but just didn't feather it quite as far and worked all around and then you know did as many layers as I needed to to build the shadow up to the level that I wanted it to make it as dark as I wanted it and just to make sure that I was getting a nice smooth blend so once I'd gone around and done that on all of the panels I then went back to Misty Grey and I started highlighting, which is obviously what I'm doing here. And I did the exact same thing, but just kind of in the opposite direction. So I've thinned the Misty Grey down so that again, each layer only makes a little bit of a difference. And then I just put some of it down where I wanted the highest concentration of light to be, where I wanted it to be its brightest, and then just feathered it out towards the shadow so by cleaning the brush off and then using the wet bristles i was able to to smooth the edge out and just gradually blend it over worked around again treated every panel as a as a separate section to highlight and just looked at where the light would be hitting each individual panel the most and just put the paint down there and then feathered towards the shadow and then again when i came back around to the first panel it had dried then i could put the next layer down and again just following the exact same process put the paint down where the light would be hitting and then just feather it out a little bit less than the last time. Work around every panel, come back to the start, keep doing that until I'd built the opacity that I wanted to. And I think a, a, a good thing with something like this, with the armor being in all separate panels, it does make it really easy to get the highlighting to look right because because when you're highlighting something like a jacket, say, which is just one continuous sort of thing, I find it really, really easy to fall into the trap of highlighting it all kind of really consistently. All of the, the raised you know, sections all kind of get the same amount of highlighting. And you've got to be really, really conscious of making sure that the top section does end up a lot brighter than the lower section. Even the parts that you're highlighting at the top need to be brighter than the parts that you're highlighting at the bottom because it's not going to get consistent light. But by having all separate panels, the top of each panel gets the most light, the bottom gets the least. And so just by following that process, it then looks right because you've got shadows and highlights created all the way up from, you know, from the bottom to the top. And it just adds a really, really good depth of color, I think. So I actually really, really enjoyed highlighting these panels in the end. Um, because yeah, it was a bit of a different approach. So rather than having just, you know, jacket and pants say, which are just one continuous thing to highlight, lots of separate elements, um, it really just sort of made me evaluate every panel individually, where the, high, where the brightest and darker spots would be on each one on its own. And I think the effect in the end works really well. And then so once I'd finished 
building the opacity with the misty gray i then went to pure white and then just picked out just the brightest spots and this was a really really small spot on each of the panels and just feathered it out a little bit um, just to really boost that contrast one last little bit um, because the contrast comes from having the difference between your brightest highlight and the deepest shadow and this just kicked that up just that little bit extra and that was actually a step that I didn't do on the other three soldiers. And it was one thing that at the end I kind of felt was missing. I was happy with the contrast, but I thought, oh, I reckon they could just be a little bit more. And so when I went to paint Jared, I thought I'm just gonna pop that little bit of white just to give it that last little boost. So once that was done, that was the armor highlighted and shaded and I was really really happy with how that was looking so now it's just on to highlighting all of the kind of leather sections I suppose they're supposed to be so the knee pads elbow pads and different coverings that are here and there that aren't the light gray metallic armor and so I just followed the exact same approach here that I did when highlighting the similar sections with coal and so that was just I laid down earth brown as the base coat and then because these are quite textured they do have those ribs running through that you can see me highlighting just there i put down an agrax earth shade wash that was just to darken all of it flow into the recesses and just to um, bring some of that detail and definition out a little bit then the first stage of highlighting was then to go back to the earth brown so like i said my first stage of highlighting is always what i base coated with because that just helps to make it look right and most of the sections got that uh, earth brown highlight just except for the most deepest recesses just to build that con just to start the process of building the contrast then as you can see i've got my uh, leather brown i think that's called and i've just mixed in yeah leather brown i've just mixed in sorry um just a little bit of it just so that i can start to build the um, build the blends, build the highlights without having too much of a um, contrast between one layer and the next because I do want there to be smooth blends. So with that first layer, I just picked out the spots that would get just, you know, the a little bit more light than um, just those that base level of highlighting. And where I needed to, I just cleaned off the bristles, had them a little bit wet and just feathered the edges out just to help blend it into the previous um, level of highlighting which again was just that earth brown so then I worked my way around picked out that level of highlighting all the way around on all of the different sections and then mixed in a little bit more of the leather brown which made it a little bit lighter and then I just worked back around and did the next stage of highlighting so now it's a little bit less highlighting and just working more and more and more towards just the parts that are going to get the most light so as you can see highlighting this um sort of flap on the back there it's now really just highlighting the bottom of it because his pack thing on his back is going to block quite a bit of light it's only going to be that part that's sticking out the most that gets the highest level of highlighting and so now i'm just sort of starting to just pick out just those key elements that are going to get the most light but again still feathering it out so even with those ribs there that are running up the middle of it, just not highlighting as many of them as the previous layer. So again, work around, um, do that stage with all of them and then mix in some more leather brown and then just do the same thing. I think this one here might be the final stage of highlighting. So you can see on his um, knee pad there, just picking out the top of the knee pad because that's the highest part that'll get the most amount of light. And then I think I only picked out like one of those little ribs rib things it was the middle one that's sticking out the most so that it just helps to build that contrast and now so i'm just working around and um, you can see sort of how quickly i'm moving from one section to the next it's really just one or two little bits on each just to you know get that brightest level of highlight blend it out into the previous one to get um you know a smooth transition and again that just helps to um to build that contrast so the difference between that brightest highlight and then the deeper shadow which came from the wash is now you know it there is quite a bit of a contrast there quite a difference and so that gets noticed when it's on the table 
And when I'm doing highlighting like this now, especially if I'm highlighting something brown, I think back to the first couple of minis that I ever painted and the highlighting that I did there. The first game that I painted was Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. And the, the very, very, very first mini that I painted was one of the characters that you can play as in that. And I can't remember his name or anything like that, but he's got a brown trench coat on, some grey pants and a little... Um, uh, sort of investigator hat kind of thing anyway. If you saw him, you'd, you'd know which one I'm talking about. And I remember when I highlighted him, I basically base coated with muddy brown, which is the only brown that I had, and this was before I had any washes as well. And then I just mixed in some white, made it like this really stupidly bright brown, and then just put that on all of the raised sections of, um, of his jacket. And at the time I thought, Hey, that looks all right, you know, but looking back at it now, it, it really didn't look all right because, yeah, sure, there was a contrast between the highlight and the base coat, but it was just really stark, really defined, and it just stuck out in all of the wrong ways. But the other thing is that the brightest highlight that I did there is not as bright as the brightest highlight that I do here. The reason that I can get to the the level of highlighting that I can here is because I've built it up over several layers. Whereas when I first started, there was no layering. It was just base coat, one level of highlighting, done. Um, and that is just not the way to go about it. You cannot get to the final level of any sort of effect, whether it's highlighting or rust or whatever, in one go, it needs to be built up over a process. Now, obviously, the more processes that you go through, the longer it takes. So it's a balance between how many steps do you want to do and um, versus how well do you want to pull that effect off. And so sure, I could have gone through more layers and even built the contrast even more, but all of that is time. But yeah, so it just, it's funny to, when I do some highlighting now, especially with brown, to think back to how I started off and just how bad it looked. But it looked bad because I tried to do it in one go. There was no building it up over layers. And I mentioned earlier about using the white to just do that very, very final stage of the highlighting. Um, I didn't realize as I was talking about it that I hadn't actually done it at that point. So this is it here. So you can see I'm using the pure white and I'm really just picking out the most raised sections to um, just to build the contrast there. And here I'm starting to paint the American flag decal sort of thing that's on his chest armor here. So this is free-handed and I have done very little free-handing. So I've been painting for maybe 18 months or so and yeah next to no free handing at all so this was a bit tricky i was happy with how it came up in the end but you know i, I look at free handing that more experienced people can do than me and it's i'm in awe of what they can do because just painting red lines that were sort of parallel to each other and that were straight that was enough of a challenge, just having them not wobbly and not touching each other. The fact that they weren't really wobbly and I don't think they touched each other, that was good enough for me. Um, in the other ones with Baraka, I think she has a South African flag and Magnus, and people are going to hate me if I get this wrong, I think he has the Finland flag um, and they were quite a bit easier to do than the American one here because they were, first of all, in more prominent spots, so they were easier to actually get to. Um, but with with them, like Baraka, for example, with her South African flag, which is on her shin, I just was easily able to block in the green Y sort of shape that's in the middle and then the blue and the red either side, not a problem at all. Just had to make sure I left a little bit of a gap in between the blue and the red and the green. But with the freehanding here on, um, on Jared, painting those individual red lines, trying to follow the contours of um, of his chest plate there. The blue was obviously pretty easy. That just had to get the shape right. But then the stars were really, really tricky. So I haven't started them here because I'm painting his visor at the moment, just trying to get a little bit of a reflection on there. It kind of worked all right. And this isn't one of the better elements, I think, of, of Jared that I was able to do, 
but you know, if you, if you don't look at it too closely, it looks all right. I'll come back to talking about the stars when I actually get to doing them, but, um, oh, which is actually right here. So to do the stars, I just sort of blobbed in um, just circles of, I went with misty gray because I thought it probably wouldn't be super bright white because it'll be a bit dirty. So yeah, just blobbed in little dots of the misty gray. And then I just tried to give little points, which is what I'm doing here. And then I come back with the oceanic blue. Oh, that's this step here, sorry, where I'm just reshaping each of them. Now, if you look at them closely, they ain't stars like they're, they've got their their blobs with some points that's really all that they are but from a distance they they work all right but yeah the the, the free handing there was definitely trickier on jared than than on the others but you know it's still a bit of fun to do something a little bit different and so that's pretty well the process that i went through to paint jared um I did really notice when I was painting him right from the start that I was confident with painting him even before I put any paint on because I had painted the other three soldiers and so I knew first of all I was more able to just look at the mini and know what different parts were going to be because I had gotten I suppose the experience from from the other ones but also knowing the processes that I was going to go through to say highlight and shade the armor and those sorts of things, I was able to just get into it. So I just started putting down, you know, obviously starting with the sections in between the panels, then just got straight into just putting the light gray down for each of the, each of his armor sections. And then from there, I was able to easily see which parts needed to be picked out to be different colors to help bust up those bigger sections. So I think sort of really going forward for myself painting, the big thing to take from this is that if I am unclear on what, how to basically start, the best thing to do as counterintuitive as it sounds is to just start. Just look at what is the main color and just start painting because you can always paint over it if you put some in the wrong spot. But really thinking back to when I was painting Baraka going into her, I was really, really unsure with quite a few elements on her as to what they should be, what material they should be, all that sort of stuff. Once I started to put that light gray down, then it made it so much more obvious what each element was going to be. First of all, it made it clear where color needed to be introduced to bust up those larger sections of the gray, but also it showed more clearly which parts were armor and which parts were other bits because looking at where the armor was it then made sense for what would sort of go next to it so it really really helped with that so yeah that's something that i can definitely pass on from from painting these is if you are looking at a mini and you're really stuck on how to just get into it and how to start it just pick a big color that's going to be on it and just start painting it because the worst thing that could possibly happen is that you paint over it and start again. So yeah, that was really the, the key element here. And then just over time, I, you know, I just obviously worked out a few other little processes in there that I could use, like the highlighting and shading with the armor. So using that wash to knock down the brightness of the gray to then be able to start to work in the shadows, giving myself then room to highlight back up. Um, and I, I, I'm really, really happy with how the armor came up because again, thinking back to starting these survivors, that was a part that I really wasn't wasn't sure of. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get that contrast looking at the artwork and how bright the armor is, um, but I was definitely able to do that. So yeah, really, really happy there. So as I'm just doing the last couple of bits on the base, which is just the exact same process that I did for all of the other ones and Cole especially, again, the previous video in this series. So if you want a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing, go check that out if you haven't. Um, Jared is done, so he is the last survivor. Um, he's ready to go into the box to go up against the Xenos Horde. I do still have the turret and the security bot to do, which I will do probably a combined video for um, sometime in the near future, so keep an eye out for that if you'd like to see that one as well. But thank you very, very much for spending some time to watch me paint another mini. Um, putting this one together and painting Jared was really, really beneficial for my own painting, so I hope it, it's given you something that you can take away as well, or at the very least, as I always say, I just hope 
hope you've simply enjoyed watching me paint. And yeah, please do leave a comment down below about whether you prefer to watch minis in real time like this, or if you prefer it to be sped up. And please do stop by the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel and hit the like and subscribe button to stay up with, to date with videos as they keep coming out from Invader and other games as well. So this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.